Thank you, Mayor Betsy. Uh, I'm really happy you asked me to come here because I look at this group and I talk to some of them, and to me, uh, these are the most interesting people in the world. Uh, because you are uh, our budding decision makers, and you are the steering team uh, for this city of Fort Worth coming up. Us old guys uh, are ready for you guys uh, to keep us going on to better and higher things. And you have all kinds of tools to do it that we don't, like this stuff, you know. <laughs> I've never seen it that while someone's speaking, the tweets come up. So uh, all I can say is I want two thumbs up every time up there, okay? Okay. You can tell each other what you really think when it's over. Uh, <laughs> but for now, be nice. Okay. Well, I... I, I, uh, I imagine that all of you, just by the nature of the fact that you're part of this organization, Steer Fort Worth, that you're working with our mayor, that you think Fort Worth is a pretty good place. It's a pretty good place to live and bring up your families and so forth. And that gives you an interest in our city and doing things for working with our city. Well, believe me, that's exactly what I think. Uh, and I have been deeply involved since I went away to school and started my business in New Mexico, but I've been deeply involved since I was drawn back uh, here in about 19, 1980. And uh, today I want to discuss with you two things that I think are really so important at the heart of why this is uh, Fort Worth, a great place. Uh, one of them, those things is very tangible, and that's our public facility. This city is rich in public facilities, uh, and any great city must be. That's one of the definitions, and we're fortunate that we are very wealthy in our public facilities. Uh, wealth, you know, is not a matter of money. It's a matter of being able to forwardly organize uh, our, our, our lives in a positive way. And our public facilities help that for the life of our community. Now, the other is an intangible that you can just call very quickly quality of life. We have a real quality of life here in Fort Worth. And again, I think that's probably uh, part of all of your attitude why this is a great place. And we can look at other cities in Texas and be very proud. We think we have amongst the best, if not the best, quality of life uh, here in Fort Worth. Well, I want to tell you these two things, our public facilities and our quality of life are inextricably intertwined. Uh, they have very much to do with each other. Uh, our, our, those facilities contribute to quality of life. That value that we have for quality of life contributes to why we have these facilities. So you can just look around you where we are today. You drove in, you saw, into the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. Now, this is a wonderful botanic garden. It's of unusual size and quality for a city like Fort Worth, uh, right in the heart of the city, which means, almost by definition, it was created, carved out in the early days of our city, together with Trinity Park and all the wonderful stretch of parkland there. Uh, it was created by what I'm going to call our forebearers. Our forebears, the the, you know, the grandfathers and great grandfathers of people here in the room, uh, the people, the early days of Fort Worth. My mother's family came to Fort Worth, five brothers and three sisters, uh, after the Civil War. They came from Georgia, which was in shambles, and uh, so that would be my great 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 uncle was uh, the first police chief in Fort Worth. Uh, 
another one was, uh, was a fire chief in Fort Worth at that time. But these are the kind of people that are forebearers. And for those who didn't, weren't born or don't have family originally in Fort Worth, you can appreciate they're your adopted forebears. And uh, they've given us something here for the public enjoyment. It's free of charge. Uh, it's a wonderful place to bring kids. It's a wonderful place to come for quiet contemplation, to, to discover nature, and so forth. Uh, now, this botanic garden is also supported today, uh, improved today, sustained today by three private organizations. Uh, the Fort Worth Garden Club built and operates all the conservatory and education complex over here. The Fort Worth Botanical Society over by the Rock Springs building uh, over, looks, looks over, the, the, uh, takes care of uh, the Japanese garden. And the newcomer in town, Britt, whose building we're in here, uh, built this building on the site of the old worn out public health building which used to be fenced off with cyclone fence from the garden. And we had the idea, I say we because I'm part of Brit, of putting our fence out there and integrating this into the campus of the garden and expanding the uh, education facilities, expanding the parking with a area, I don't know if you appreciate Somewhere you can read on the wall about this parking area. It collects all the rainfall. There's no runoff from this parking area. It collects it and recycles that. And much of it is caught in basins out there and sinks down into the, back into the ground into the aquifer. And stuff that runs over there is kept in a pond over here. And it goes back to irrigate and it goes on the green roof here. And so uh, uh, that's part of what, what we did with this. So this is a public-private partnership, and one reason it's a great garden. Now, I'm going to stay in the neighborhood, because right across the street is the Will Rogers Center, built by our forebears in 1936. Now, what an incredible facility for generation after generation, because of all of the events. Uh, of course, the Fort Worth Stock Show and Rodeo is the highest profile. That wouldn't be the show it was if it weren't for these public facilities. They're owned by and operated by the city. Um, today, they bring the most lucrative convention and visitor business you can get, uh, equestrian shows. I always say anybody that shows horses has disposable income by definition. <laughs> uh, and they dispose of it here in Fort Worth, a large <laughs> chunk of it. Uh, <laughs> It's really, it's really quite wonderful. When I was a kid, that's where you went ice skating. Uh, the skating rink was very operative. Uh, uh, still, some of the public shows are not at the convention center, circuses and so forth. This is a great facility. Now, it has been expanded, grown, improved over the years um, through public-private partnership because the stock show has been very active at taking the, its earnings and putting them back in the city's facilities so they can be used 12 months of the year. Uh, the stock show has invested more than $50 million in present day dollar terms in the facilities of the Will Rogers Complex. You don't have to go far up the road to find the zoo, a fabulous zoo, especially for a city of this of this size. And when I say of this size, we may be 750,000 people now, but it was only two decades ago we were like 350,000 people. And still we have that zoo. And of course, that is a wonderful public private partnership with the Fort Worth Zoo Association that actually, under contract with the city, uh, operates it. It's, uh, it's an interesting deal. The city owns all the facilities and the zoo association owns all the animals. They couldn't do without each other, obviously. <laughs> uh, so, do we see a pattern here? Well, we really do. We're lucky in Fort Worth, one, because of our forebears, the vision they had, uh, and the willingness to make investments to start these, cap these beautiful facilities, public facilities, and they were doing it to make, make Fort Worth proud at their time, but 
They were doing it thinking of us. Uh, we also are very lucky for our value, the value for quality that we have. We understand quality of life is the number one issue in the city you live in. And one reason it's so important is what you want most for your children, not just for your own pleasure. Um, we're very lucky that the public sector and the private sector are both interested in these things and that here we really know how to work together in public-private partnerships. Some of them going back decades, others quite new, others just for special purposes and then they, and then they dissolve. Uh, so here's a lesson in all of this for us. We are somebody's forebearers. We are the forebearers. We're the forebearers of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And so we have the same responsibilities that our forebearers had. Every generation must build and must renew what has been built before. Uh, because cities are living organisms. You can't just put them aside on a, sh on a shelf to admire them. Uh, they're, li they're like your dog. Uh, <laughs> you've got to feed them every day. You've got to love them every day. You've got to take care of their health when they fall ill. Uh, and they will give you no end of love and pleasure back. A city will give you no end of love and pleasure back if you take care of it. Uh, if you take care, they will thrive. If you, if you neglect your city, uh, it will become despondent and decrepit and die away. Uh, now, all of this, when we talk about these public facilities, it takes investment. Uh, it takes capital investment, just by definition. Uh, and uh, we're a great city because over the decades we have made those capital investments, or our forebears have, not, not us. Uh, and so doing so, it cost every generation. It's our responsibility, I would say. There's a thing called intergenerational neutrality. And basically what that means, what I do is not taken away from what the next generations will get, but what I do gives enough to my generation that I'm not just slaving away and getting nothing in order to provide for the future generations. And that's wh what makes a great city. We wouldn't have a great spirit if we were slaving away thinking we got to make things good in 40 years, but now we can, uh, we can skimp. Um, and that's, it. that's important to remember. Um, now, one thing that you encounter in this world today, and this is something always been around, but I think has come to more prominence, uh, you encounter what I'm going to call the tax naysayers, okay? Uh, there, there are always a certain number of people, there always have been, always will, who think that there is virtue in not having to pay taxes. Uh, uh, there are people in this city that think that keeping up the streets, picking up the garbage, delivering the water, keeping the peace and putting out fires is all we need to pay for. Well, and that's what I'm calling tax naysayers. Say there shouldn't be taxes, there shouldn't be government. Though at the same time, uh, uh, many tax naysayers uh, may use our public facilities and our services very, very liberally. Somehow they just don't think it's fair for them to have to pay for it. Uh, <laughs> Now, you are intelligent men and women, you're professionals, you're, you're in the most exciting parts of your lives and your careers, you're working hard uh, to improve things for your family and so forth, because you know that you get what you pay for. You know your hard work and your drive uh, uh, lead to success. So you are paying for your homes, your cars, you're paying for education uh, for your kids. 
uh, though it may be through a public uh, system, you're paying for your entertainment. Uh, you know you get what you pay for, uh, and what you pay for gives you a better quality of life. Uh, so if you think in the bigger scale of our city and the longer term of your kids' generation and your grandkids' generation, it's up to us to be making capital investments. Uh, just like you may own your home and you pay every month on a mortgage and one day you'll, you'll own it clear of debt, we must build things and the city take out debt and we will pay for it every year so that one day debt free, our kids will have the kind of facilities, the kind of city, yes, the quality of streets and sidewalks and sewers and storm drainage, but also the quality of facilities that you can use for entertainment, education, sport, uh, all of those things, those kind of capital uh, f facilities so that we have them. It's incumbent on all of us, you, me, the mayor, uh, uh, to, to build, uh, uh, to, to make investments today with our money and hard work to build for our children those things uh, that will ensure what, what's here today will be obsolete. It will be too small. It will be outdated somehow uh, uh, in the future because we got it from two, gener two, three generations ago. It's incumbent on us to keep that process up and moving. Um, we don't have... Uh, a lot, a lot of capital capacity here in Fort Worth. We struggle with that every year in the budgets. Uh, uh, we have to choose very carefully how we expend it. Uh, we have to make decisions on that. But one thing we can't afford to do, you know, uh, a city like all businesses has cycles. If we think that every time there's an up cycle and things are good and the money's coming into the city budget and we have some surplus, let's cut the taxes. That wouldn't be a good day, way to run business. I'm making more money this year, I'm gonna cut my prices. Uh, because then when the cycle goes and it's tight and we don't have money and you've gotta cut something, in today's world, you can't raise taxes back where they were. We have to look at this intelligently and long-term and make these investments for our kids.